What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to optimize your Steam Remote Play settings so that you can get the best quality video and audio as possible over your direct um, network link. Uh, before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. So if you want some more tech tips, tricks, uh, gaming videos, and maybe even check out my virtual studio or game projects, um, please go ahead and click on that sub button below. I'd very much appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the video itself. Let's open up Steam. And we're going to go into the Steam settings. Inside Steam settings and Steam Remote Play, uh, if you watched my last video, you're probably already connected to Steam Remote Play. So we're going to jump right into the options that you can use to optimize traffic. Um, before we even go into the hardware settings, um, it's important to mention your network. Your network speed is one of the most important factors when streaming games from a gaming computer to a client PC or phone. Um, if you're using a Wi-Fi network, or a cellular network, a lot of networks are not capable of uh, streaming high bandwidth items like this uh, without some sort of latency or issues. Um, even if you have, like in my case, I have a gigabit connection, uh, because my router is a single band router, I only get 450 megabits per second on Wi-Fi. And of that, I'm also battling other factors such as the signal strength and um, thing, you know things cutting out, people walking by the router even can affect it. So I always recommend directly connecting through Ethernet whenever possible. Um, that will get you the full connection speed possible. Um, most modern routers have gigabit switches, uh, so you should be getting a thousand megabits back and forth within your home network. Um, if you have to be using internet, it's even more important to be on ethernet so that you have um, a strong connection on both ends. Uh, now we can jump into the host options. These are on the computer that is your gaming computer, your main computer. In advanced host options, let's go over what all of these mean. Play audio and host will play the audio on the gaming computer, or if you uncheck it, it will play the audio on the device. So if you're playing on your phone, and you want the audio from the game to come from your phone, uncheck that box. If you're playing on a secondary computer in the same room and you have a nice sound system and you want it to play out of your sound system, um, you can check that box and it'll come out of your main gaming computer instead. Uh, change de desktop resolution to match streaming client. This is where you can optimize some here. Um, I always recommend using this because a lot of devices are not full 1080p. Um, many Chromebooks, many phones, things like that are running at non-standard resolutions that are smaller than 1080p. So your gaming computer, by switching to that resolution, will actually have less power um, or have to use less power um, to run that game and therefore give better performance. So always uh, change desktop resolution to match the streaming client, um, unless, of course, it's the opposite direction where you're streaming to a 4K device or something, which in, ca in that case, this probably wouldn't work too well anyway. Um, dynamically adjust capture resolution to improve performance. Um, that will adjust the resolution if it's lagging behind. So if your computer can't handle the current um, things that are happening on screen, it will drop the resolution from like 1080 to 720. And then as um, that area clears up and your uh, computer can handle it again, it'll jump back up to 1080. Um, you can leave that on to improve performance for sure. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, make sure to check Use NVFPC Capture on NVIDIA GPUs. That will speed up the encoding process. And then be sure to check the appropriate boxes here for enable hardware encoding. If you have an AMD GPU, uh, use AMD. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, use NVIDIA. If you have an Intel iGPU, like a laptop with an integrated um, graphics card, you'll want to use this one. For encoding threads, I always recommend automatic. If you change it to 8, you may have uh, some issues with performance with your game itself. You don't want to have a great streaming situation and then get lag and glitches in your game. You want your game to run great and then you're streaming to pull it in great after. Um, and then prioritize network traffic. Prioritize network traffic works with modern routers that support QoS or quality of service that will prioritize this traffic over other devices on your network that maybe are just downloading files or watching Netflix. Um, actually, Netflix is a bad example because that's usually considered priority traffic. 
But if other people are downloading files and doing things like that, it won't be as fast. That way, more of the network bandwidth can be dedicated to your game streaming. Definitely leave that checked. Now, on your client computer, there are also some settings we can optimize. We can choose between, and this is assuming we've already logged into our other client computer. We're not on our gaming machine anymore. We are on our um, streaming machine. So we want to go into advanced client options after choosing one of these. We could choose fast, which favors high frames per second and um, speedy connections. Balanced, which um, adds a little bit more graphical fidelity to make sure that it looks nice coming through. And beautiful, that will get the best quality image, but may lower the frame rate of your incoming uh, stream. So you can choose balanced or fast if you're having issues with the higher end visual quality. So let's choose balanced for now. Then we can go to advanced client options. <coughs> Here we could choose the type of overlay we want. Uh, icons is fine usually. If you want more advanced information about the overlay when you bring it up, you can choose details and that'll give uh, a written description of each one. You can limit bandwidth. Um, so if you have a slower connection, for example, uh, you may want to limit this to the internet speed that you have. If you have a 30 megabyte connection, maybe you want to set it to 20 so that it stays well under your limit and it doesn't have any uh, cutout quality or things like that. If you're locally on a network, you can adjust this based on that because locally you can get much higher internet speeds, even a gigabit or more, um, if you have that kind of hardware but um, you can get much faster connections because the internet isn't required. Uh, that's where you can use a higher number here, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend unlimited. Unlimited means that it's at lossless quality, but it's also a very high bit rate um, video file that's being streamed. So you're gonna lose some, um, it's gonna be very performance heavy, uh, so power intensive. So what you wanna do is set this to somewhere that's gonna look nice. To give you an idea, uh, those who stream on Twitch stream at about 7 megabits per second, or megabytes per second, 7,000 kilobits per second. Um, so setting it to even something like 20 would still be a very high quality image. Um, if you want more closer to lossless quality, you can move up to 40 or 50. Uh, so let's set it to 25 for now. Limit resolution. You can limit the screen resolution here in case you... Um, have a high resolution like 4K display. We already set the host computer up to switch to the client uh, display size if that's smaller. But if the client display size is for example 1080 but your computer can only handle streaming in 720, you might want to limit it further by setting the max resolution to a number here. So we can say we can leave it to 900p for example, which is right in between 720 and 1080. So it's not too big of a loss. For speaker configuration, you can choose stereo, quadraphonic, and 5.1 surround sound. Streaming 5.1 surround sound does take more bandwidth because it's more audio um, data that's being sent. So this will slow down the stream. If you're not using 5.1, which most client computers wouldn't be, you can safely just stream stereo. Um, leaving it to auto will detect stereo usually automatically. And then uh, default controller overlay button. This won't do anything for optimization. You can just choose which button brings up the game overlay. Um, finally, you want to enable hardware decoding because this will speed up the processing of the video file as it's re received on your end. So just because it's sent to your computer very fast doesn't mean it's being read very fast. So by enabling hardware decoding, we can make use of the graphics card on the streaming computer, even if it's not that great, to speed up that video and make sure it's um, refreshing as quickly as possible. And then enable touch controls. If you have a touchscreen device, you can enable touch controls. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and that's about it. That's a great way, to, uh, that's a lot of different ways to optimize your Steam remote play connection. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments or ideas of your own on ways to increase the uh, connection reliability or quality of Steam remote play, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace. What? You've never heard of Stream Savers? And you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price.